Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Professor Dirk Voorhoof. Professor Voorhoof has been a lecturer in European Media and Information Law at the Ghent University and at the Copenhagen University for decades. And he reports on developments regarding freedom of expression, media, and journalism in Europe. He is co-founder and member of the European Center for Press and Media Freedom, and is also a member of such initiatives as the Legal Human Academy, the Human Rights Center at Ghent University, and CASE, the Coalition Against Slaps in Europe. Dirk has also contributed to the work of regulators such as the Flemish Media Regulator, and is a member of multiple expert networks. He has published extensively with a focus on freedom of expression and more recently the impact of slaps. Okay, Dirk, you know about your challenge. Telling yeah. us how to fix an element included or omitted in the Media Freedom Act. Yes, well, on 16 September 2022, the European Commission has presented a framework of measures to protect freedom and pluralism in the EU. Um, and it has done that by introducing what is now called the European Media Freedom Act proposal. It's still a proposal. The proposal will be a, a regulation and it aims to ensure, let's say, editorial independence from the impact of vested commercial and political interests. It also provides for stable funding of public service broadcasting, for guarantees for media pluralism, and in particular, it aims also to safeguard against surveillance of media workers and media service providers. In this blog about the proposal of the European Media Freedom Act, we will focus on one specific aspect, one specific issue that certainly needs further improvement is the section regarding the protection of journalistic sources, which is provided in Article 4 of the uh, proposal. It is our opinion that the formulation of this provision on protection of sources risks rather to be a step backwards in the protection of journalistic sources. The actual provision does not guarantee the level of protection that all EU member states already should respect with regard to the protection of sources. And that is because all EU member states are also a member of the European Convention on Human Rights, in which there is an Article 10 on the right to freedom of expression. And according to the European Court of Human Rights and its well-established case law, the right to protect sources, the right of journalists to protect their sources is very robustly protected. So one has to wonder whether the proposal of the directive will add something in top of what is already required that the member states recognize in terms of um, protecting um, the sources. I think there are five points of uh, criticism that I would briefly like to bring forward because the ideas are good to harmonize the uh, protection of sources because in some countries they haven't reached yet the level that is required by the European Convention. First of all, and maybe most importantly, the proposal does not guarantee what we call an ex ante review before a police or a public prosecutor or an intelligence service can make a decision to look into the sources of a journalist, there should be beforehand a decision by a court or a judge or an independent body. This is not clearly required according to the proposal. And that, of course, is a very important procedural guarantee which, uh, which is missing. Uh, secondly, um, the um, proposal only um, opts for an opinion afterwards, and that is, of course, not strong enough as a guarantee. Also, it lacks uh, other important guarantees such as um, proportionality and subsidiarity. And it um, also introduces the possibility um, to deploy spyware 
and it wants to protect journalists, but it leaves the door too wide open um, to install spyware. So all in all, the guarantees are not sufficient. And I think the Commission and the other institutions, the Parliament and the Council of Ministers, will need to do an effort to um, introduce more specific requirements in order to achieve the harmonization of a good guarantee to protect sources in the EU. Um, thank you, Professor Vorhoff. Um, so if we summarize, the um, hook of Article 4 is the right one. There needs to be that protection of sources. The content is weak, <laughs> let's put it that way, mm -hmm. due to the lack of emphasis on due process, avoiding spyware, uh, and certainly, I think recently with Pegasus uh, scandals, um, it, it spyware is a real problem, and it's one that is encountered a lot by journalists. Um, and so, basically, with the foundations of Article 4, it's now up to the European Parliament and the Council to build something that is much stronger and that either meets the criteria of uh, Article 10 of the convention or exceeds them, which would be even better in terms of safeguards for freedom of expression and protection of sources of journalists. Yes, um, yes. Thank you so much yes. for your contribution. We hope that um, policymakers will listen. You certainly have the experience and, and, and the credentials to give them the right advice. And I'm sure we'll be talking again in the next months uh, as the file evolves in Brussels. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome.